friends, I'm Monica Ferro. And I'm Rupanchi Thakrar. There are many instances where we get to see chemical changes in our day-to-day -day life. For example, on hot summer days, you must have observed some change in milk when it is left at room temperature. Yes, it gets sour and forms a curd-like mass. Very true. Well, this is because of some chemical reaction. And today, we are going to be dealing with chemical reactions and their characteristics and how to represent them in the form of a balanced equation. Every day, we witness evidences of chemical reactions. For instance, when a fire burns or a metal rusts. To a great extent, we are surrounded by products of chemical reactions. The colors and the clothes we wear, or artificial materials such as polymers used in all kinds of products from nylon jackets to plastic milk containers. Besides these, the process of respiration, the process of digestion, photosynthesis, burning of fuels and ripening of fruits etc. are some of the daily situations involving chemical reactions. Well, if we take two cases like the burning of fuel and the melting of ice, how can we judge which case involves a chemical reaction? That's a good question. A chemical reaction always occurs when the actual composition changes. That is, when one substance is transformed into another. So, here, the burning of fuel involves some chemical reaction. Processes in which new substances with new properties are formed are called chemical reactions. Now, let us take an example and learn what happens during a chemical reaction. When sulphur is burnt in air or oxygen, it forms sulphur dioxide. Sulphur dioxide, when passed through water, forms a solution of sulfurous acid, which is acidic in nature. So it is clear from this reaction that chemical reaction involve breaking of old chemical bonds and making of new chemical bonds. This means a chemical reaction involves only a rearrangement of atoms. Okay, that means we can generalize that in every chemical reaction, new substances with new properties are formed. Yes, the participants are known as reactants, which by chemically reacting with one another, result in the creation of a product or products. The properties of the product are different from either of the reactants. Now let's perform some activities to learn about the different types of reactions and how to represent these chemical reactions. We take a magnesium ribbon and hold it with a pair of tongs. We burn it using a spirit lamp. We observe that the magnesium ribbon burns with a dazzling white flame and is converted into a white powder. This powder is magnesium oxide. The properties of the product magnesium oxide are entirely different from those of the reactants magnesium and oxygen. Word equation. Magnesium as ribbon plus oxygen from the air react on heating to form magnesium oxide in the form of a white powder. Magnesium and oxygen are the reactants and magnesium oxide is the product. This chemical reaction can be represented in the form of a word equation in which the reactants are written on the left hand side LHS with a plus sign between them. Similarly, Products are written on the right-hand side, RHS. But what is meant by a chemical equation and how do we write a chemical equation? If we use the formulae of the reactant and product molecules or atoms, instead of a word equation, we can write a chemical equation which is far more concise and useful. Writing a chemical equation. For example, the chemical equation for the previous activity can be written as magnesium plus oxygen is equal to magnesium oxide. 
A chemical equation is a symbolic representation of a chemical reaction where the reactant entities are given on the left hand side and the product entities on the right hand side. Then the formation of water can be expressed as H2 plus O2 which gives H2O. Yes. But, in order to show a true chemical reaction, the number of atoms of each element on both sides should be equal. This is known as balancing a chemical equation and it is based on the law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass? What is that? Okay, let's understand what the law of conservation of mass is and how to balance a chemical equation. Balancing a chemical equation According to the law of conservation of mass, matter is neither created nor destroyed. For example, Na plus O2 is equal to Na2O. Sodium plus oxygen is equal to sodium oxide. In order to balance this equation, there must be an equal amount of Na and O2 on both sides of the arrow. As it stands now, there is one atom of Na on the left, the two atoms of Na on the right. This problem is solved by putting a 2 in front of Na on the left hand side. So now it becomes 2Na plus O2 is equal to Na2O. Now the sodium is taken care of, but there are two oxygen atoms on the left hand side, while there is only one on the right hand side. This is still an unbalanced equation. To fix this, a 2 is added in front of the Na2O on the right hand side. Now the equation has 2Na plus O2 is equal to 2Na2O. This makes 4Na or sodium atoms on the right hand side. To fix this, two more Na's are added on the left side. The equation will now look like this. 4Na plus O2 is equal to 2Na2O. Sodium plus oxygen is equal to sodium oxide. This equation is a balanced equation because there is an equal number of atoms of each element on the left and right hand sides of the equation. And always keep in mind two things you cannot do when balancing an equation. One, you cannot change a subscript. Two, you cannot place a coefficient in the middle of a formula. The coefficient comes in the beginning of formulae. Well, now it seems balancing an equation is child's play. It's great fun doing this, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, and one more thing we talked about was that in chemical reactions, a rearrangement of atoms takes place. Now, can we observe it? And if we cannot, then how can we know that a chemical reaction has taken place? Of course, we can't see atoms with the naked eye. But fortunately, there are a number of clues which tell us when a chemical reaction has occurred. And these characterize a chemical reaction. Now let's try to find these out. When a chemical reaction takes place, there are some features that we can observe very easily. These features are known as the characteristics of the chemical reaction. The important characteristics of chemical reactions are 1. Evolution of a gas 2. Formation of a precipitate 3. Change in color 4. Change in temperature 5. Change in state Any one of these general characteristics can tell us whether a chemical reaction has taken place or not. For example, if a gas is evolved, we can say that a chemical reaction has taken place. It means that each reaction has its own characteristics which predict the happening of a new chemical change. Exactly. Let's take a few chemical reactions to show all these characteristics and also try to write balanced chemical equations for them. Evolution of a gas. We take some zinc granules in a conical flask and add dilute sulfuric acid over the zinc granules we see that a gas bubbles out, which means heat is liberated. Actually, when zinc granules react with dilute sulfuric acid, bubbles of hydrogen gas are produced. Zinc granules plus dilute sulfuric acid is equal to zinc sulfate plus hydrogen. 
This is a displacement reaction in which Zn displaces H from the acid and hence it is characterized by the evolution of hydrogen gas. This reaction was referred to as displacement reaction. Can you please explain it in detail? Sure. A reaction in which an atom or a group of atoms is displaced by another is referred to as a displacement reaction. Okay, now I've got it. Well, one more thing we have seen here is, along with the evolution of gas, heat was released when zinc reacted with acid. Very true. So, it can also be characterized by a change in temperature. Such a reaction where heat is released is known as an exothermic reaction. Let's look at a few examples. We observe the evolution of a large amount of heat when quicklime, that is calcium oxide, reacts with water, slaked lime, that is calcium hydroxide, is formed, and a lot of heat energy is produced. Calcium oxide plus water is equal to calcium hydroxide. This heat raises the temperature due to which the reaction mixture becomes hot. So we can say that the reaction between quicklime and water to form slaked lime is an exothermic reaction which means it is a heat producing reaction. Another example of exothermic reaction would be during the burning of methane and oxygen. A large amount of heat energy is also produced. Methane plus oxygen is equal to carbon dioxide plus water plus heat energy. Now, chemical reactions that result in a fall in temperature are known as endothermic reactions. Okay, but why and when is a reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, we know that a chemical reaction involves the making and breaking of bonds. Now, the breaking of bonds requires energy, while when new bonds are formed, energy is released. When the energy required is greater than the energy released, the additional energy is taken from the surroundings. Hence, the reaction is an endothermic reaction. Otherwise, it is exothermic. Okay. And hence, when we dissolve ammonium chloride, the beaker gets cold as it is an endothermic reaction and the heat is taken from the surroundings. Yes. Now, let's take another example of an endothermic reaction and write the equation for it. When barium hydroxide is added to ammonium chloride in a beaker, and mixed with a glass rod, it results in the formation of barium chloride, ammonia and water. A lot of heat energy is absorbed during this reaction due to which the temperature of the bottom of the beaker becomes very cold. Thus, the chemical reaction between barium hydroxide and ammonium chloride to form barium chloride, ammonia and water is characterized by a change in temperature which is fall in temperature. Barium hydroxide plus 2 ammonium chloride gives barium chloride plus 2 ammonia plus 2 water. It is an endothermic reaction which means heat absorbing reaction. Besides the evolution of gas and a change in temperature, in some reactions a precipitate is formed. Precipitate? What is meant by that? A precipitate is a solid product which separates out from the solution during a chemical reaction. Formation of a precipitate. We take some lead nitrate solution in a test tube and add potassium iodide solution to it. We observe that a yellow precipitate is formed at once. A change in color from colorless to yellow also takes place in this chemical reaction. Thus, the chemical reaction between potassium iodide and lead nitrate is characterized by the formation of a yellow precipitate and change in color. So the balanced chemical equation for this is lead nitrate, which is colorless, plus potassium iodide is equal to lead iodide plus potassium nitrate, yellow precipitate. But I'm not sure what causes precipitation in this reaction. Please help me out. See, in this case, there is an exchange of ions between the reactants, which results in the formation of some insoluble product. Hence, there is precipitation. Such a reaction is termed as a double displacement reaction. 
Okay, now I've got it. This means that the reactions are classified into different classes. So what is the reaction of the formation of water from H2 and O2? That is a combination reaction. Come, let's take some more examples to make it clearer. When two or more substances, elements or compounds combine to form a single product, the reactions are called combination reactions. Hydrogen and oxygen combine to form a single compound, water. In this reaction, two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, combine to form a single compound, water. So this is an example of a combination reaction. Thus, the formation of water from hydrogen and oxygen is a combination reaction. Burning of coal is another example. Carbon, coal, burns in oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Well, so far we have come across displacement reactions, double displacement reactions and combination reactions, right? Absolutely right. Besides these, there are decomposition reactions which are the opposite of combination reactions. Come, let's perform an activity to understand this. Decomposition reaction. Electrolysis is a chemical reaction carried out by passing an electric current through acidified water. When this is done, the resultant products are collected in two test tubes. The amount of gas collected in one test tube is double the amount of gas collected in the other test tube. When tested, the gas, which is half in quantity, supports combustion. That is oxygen. Whereas the gas, which is double in quantity, does not support combustion. That is hydrogen. This experiment shows that the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in water is 2 is to 1 by volume. Okay. That means when a compound breaks into more than one product, it's called decomposition. Is that right? Yes, very good. And the energy required for decomposition comes from heat, light or electricity. Recap. So, what have you learnt in today's session? 1. A complete chemical equation represents the reactants, products and their physical states symbolically. Two. Equations must always be balanced. 3. Reactions in which heat is given out along with the products are called exothermic reactions. Reactions in which energy is absorbed are known as endothermic reactions. 4. The important characteristics of chemical reactions are evolution of a gas, formation of a precipitate, change in color, change in temperature, change in state. Now I'm very clear about the concepts related to balancing of chemical equation. Thank you, ma'am. Just one more thing. My friend wants to ask you a question. May I call her? Of course. I'll be glad to help her. Hello, ma'am. I've understood the topic, but I'd like to know how to prepare it from the point of view of the examination. Could you please give me some guidelines? You can be asked two kinds of questions on this topic. Either simple questions to test your knowledge, these carry one or two marks. Or two or three mark questions to test your understanding. But this topic as a whole is very important as you will use balanced chemical equations in all the other chemistry chapters. Now let us take a few questions which are important from the point of view of examination. One. What are combination reactions? Give one example. Two marks. Two. Give an example of a double displacement reaction. One mark. Now, answer of such questions should be in precise words along with example. Then only you will be able to fetch full marks. Like, answer one. When two or more substances combine to form a single product, the reactions are called combination reactions. For example, hydrogen and oxygen are combining to form a single compound, water. Answer 2. Lead nitrate plus 2 potassium iodide gives lead iodide and potassium nitrate. Besides knowledge-based questions, understanding-based questions can also be asked like Question 1. What is respiration and why is it considered an exothermic reaction? 5 marks. 
question 2 give reasons for a decomposition reactions are called endothermic reactions one mark b sodium and potassium are kept in kerosene oil one mark now the answer for this is answer one we need energy to stay alive we get this energy from the food we eat during digestion food is broken down into simpler substances food mainly contains carbohydrates which are broken down to form glucose this glucose combines with oxygen in the cells of our body and provides energy the special name of this reaction is respiration in the process of respiration oxygen is inhaled which oxidizes glucose and produces carbon dioxide water and energy in the form of ATP adenosine triphosphate in the living systems it is thus an exothermic reaction assignment one what happens when calcium hydroxide is treated with chlorine gas give the balanced chemical equation Two, write the balanced chemical equations for the following reactions a calcium hydroxide plus carbon dioxide is equal to calcium carbonate plus water b zinc plus silver nitrate is equal to zinc nitrate plus silver c aluminium plus copper chloride is equal to aluminium chloride plus copper with that I'm sure you must have mastered chemical reactions their characteristics and how to balance equations for them I have and I hope all of you too are equally comfortable with the topic just keep identifying chemical reactions occurring all around you and keep writing balanced equations for them goodbye